You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst, Roderick's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. <laughs> My wonderful partner is just in the kitchen uh, putting some food away. We had a lovely meal cooked for us by one of our roommates. It was very much appreciated. It was like steak and grilled chicken. Grilled barbecue chicken with, like, homemade mashed potatoes and rice, and oh my god, it was just incredible. Anyway, y'all, it's uh, time for a game, and not food review. <laughs> Roderick says with his usual tone of voice as he turns around to meet my eye. He raises an eyebrow at me and crosses his arms, looking at me as if I had gone completely insane. I do the same in return, clearly annoying, clearly annoying him. What? Care to explain why you were naked? Huh? The wolf's outputting stare suddenly makes me feel exposed and insecure, as if I were performing some forbidden action. I just don't want to get the room wet. The wolf looks down and finally notices the puddle that has formed where he's standing. Something seems to click inside of him, and he seems to, he seems to notice his mistake. I see. Didn't think about it that way. Roderick sighs as he begins taking pieces of his armor off of him. He starts by unbuttoning the belts of his arm, arm protectors. And he takes those off. He, when he takes those off, he also removes the piece that covers his elbows. The boots come next, and let me tell you, those things look heavy as fuck. How can he even manage to walk around wearing those? Must be quite uncomfortable. Hey. His voice snaps me out of my thoughts and makes my eyes fall on his own. Those big red orbs that I've seen so many times by now. It's not a show. Beat it. Ah, sorry. I turn around, my cheeks a little flustered. D did I really stare for that long? I didn't even notice. So for the next five minutes, I just stared at the wall until the wolf himself called for me. Hey, Runt, I need a hand. Oh, yeah? I, I thought I was supposed to beat it. I say without turning around, not wanting to make him uncomfortable. Although, being honest, I am probably the only one feeling this way. Don't be a dick. Turn around. I do as he says, and I notice that he's got, that he's got his back turned on me. His arms are trying to reach something that is behind him. Some sort of knot that is tying the shoulder plates to his back. You can't... Reach? Yes, now shut up and help me. I grunt at his not-so-polite response, but I end up helping him either way, and to be honest, seeing him struggle like that is kind of cute. Okay, do I just untie this? Seems really tight, though. Yes, so get to it. I roll my eyes again, but giggle at his antics. He sure hates to ask for help. Such a grumpy wolf. The knot is quite tight, and it takes, a few, takes me a few seconds to properly untie it. No surprise he couldn't do it himself. Oof. But eventually, it gives in and the armor falls to, falls to the ground with a loud thud. I got scared for a second, believing it hit my feet, but it seems like no damage was done. Shit, man, this thing sure is heavy. It's supposed to protect you, runt. What did you expect? Roderick begins to stretch his muscles, giving me a full display of his impressive back. Oh god, of course they're playing music like that. His neck, even if covered by fur, is impressively thick. So are his shoulders and upper back. The only spot that is not perfectly toned is his lower back, where a bit of fat can be spotted. And to be honest, it suits him, as it makes him look thicker. But aside from all the muscles, there is something else that gets my attention. A huge scar in the form of an X in the middle of his back. I've seen it a quite I've seen it a few times, and but this is the first time I'm so close to it. The edges of the scar are irregular and it seems like it didn't heal properly, as the skin became too nasty looking. Unlike my own scar, which is smoother. Suddenly an odd feeling overtook me, feeling tempted to touch it. I want to feel the skin of the wolf. I want to understand his pain. Perhaps if I do, he'll finally open up to me. So as I place my hand on top of him, I try to give him a good brush. Before I can notice, Roderick turned around violently, hitting the side of my muzzle with the back of his fist. I end up crashing on the floor, hitting my, near, hitting my rear in the process. What the hell do you think you're doing? As I look up, I can see the wolf's orb staring down at me. His eyes are full of hatred, which sends a chill down my spine, as I thought, I would never direct, as I thought he would never direct such feeling towards me ever again. I thought we had made some progress. One second, y'all. It is indeed the time for water. Okay. I look away and cover my snout with my hand as I try to stand up with the other. The wolf just remains there, still a stone. Still as a stone. He hasn't said anything or done anything. He just keeps... He's just keeping his eyes glued to me. And when I direct my gaze back at him, what I see surprises me. He seems... scared. He looks at me with a terrified expression... 
The hand that he used to hit me with is shaking a little and his feet and his ears are folded back. This doesn't feel like those times he's hit me during the training. For some reason, I can see remorse in his eyes. But I don't understand this. Why is he so scared? What's going on through his mind right now? You shouldn't have done that. Fuck, what were you thinking touching another man's back like that? I, I just wanted to... I need to take some air. And with that said, he storms out of the room and slams the door behind him, leaving me all alone with a bleeding nose and a lot of questions. After Roderick left, I chose, the he I chose to head toward the bathroom, to tend to my wound and take a much-needed shower. I also decided to not give that give the I also decided not to give that episode much importance. I've always known the wolf has anger issues, and I was stupid enough to overstep my boundaries. Besides knowing the wolf, he'll try to sweep things under the rug, and I'm fine with that. I just want to enjoy the rest of the night. So I take my sweet time in the bathroom, cleaning myself up from everything that happened today. Eventually, I finish up and then exit the bathroom with my dry underwear back on. As I walk back to our room, I encounter the innkeeper standing by the out by the hallway. When he sees me, his ears perk up and he waves at me. I wave back as he approaches me. Sir, are you happy with your room? Is there anything I can do? Oh, not at all, sir. The room is great. Uh, no complaints at all. Although, thinking about it, one comes to mind. Except for the bed. You see, we're not that close to each other. There being only one bed made things a little inconvenient. Oh, by the goddesses, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Oh, no, it's okay, I'm just saying for next time. Well, that's on me. The king requested one room, so I had no idea two of his men would come at the same time. I should have been better prepared. So, if you desire, there is one free room at the end of the hallway. It's a little bit smaller, but I'm sure it will fit your needs just fine. That's great to know. Thank you. With that said, the man bows lightly and then walks away down the hall. I keep my eyes on him as he slowly vanishes from sight. And when he is gone, I just walk back to our room. When I open the door, I immediately spot the big black figure sitting by the window. He's clearly heard me enter, and I see his ears twitching. But he looks like he has decided to ignore me for the night. So with nothing better to do, I sit by the, uh, sit by the edge of the bed, not saying a word. It's a real shame I brought nothing to entertain myself with. All I can do for now is look at the ceiling and think. And honestly, thinking is the last thing I want to do, be doing right now. My head is a mess. How's your nose? The voice of the wolf comes out of nowhere and makes me blink a few times, as I'm not sure if I imagined it. It's fine. Oh, what is that? Is that a, uh, that's a hair, okay. Not a crack, a hair, okay. Is it broken? No, I don't think so. It hurts a little, though. Here, let me see. Oh, my. Ooh, woo, what's this? Ha! <laughs> oh, my. The wolf finally turns around to meet my gaze. He walks to my side of the bed and crouches in front of me. He then places his hand on my cheek and applies some pressure. Does it hurt when I do this? Seriously, I'm fine, man. It's nothing. I slap his hand away as I back off a little. What's gotten into him? This is really making me uncomfortable. I mean, he's never given a shit if I was injured or not. How am I even supposed to react to this? Next time I hit you like that, make sure to hit back. That way you won't make me feel so guilty, dammit. <laughs> Off he goes. The wolf stands up and then walks towards the door. Meanwhile, I just watch his back as he exits the room. Eventually, when the silence sets and I notice how my fast, how my, how fast my heart is beating, I, a thought crosses my mind. Was I fucking blushing? Oh, goddesses! I totally was, wasn't I? Oh, that's so embarrassing. Worst thing is, he just touched me for a few seconds, so I don't even want to imagine what would happen if things got escalated. W wait, Esc escalated? What am I even thinking? This is Roderick we're talking about. Something like that would never happen in a million years. But still, I touch my cheek trying to remember the feeling of his hand on it. So warm. So, how was your bath? Did you enjoy the hot water? I tried to strike up a conversation with the wolf as he returned. Anything to leave that whole experience behind us. I don't care about that stuff. I just use the water from the barrel. Meaning that he didn't even enjoy the pleasure of washing his fur with hot water? Well, what kind of monster is he? You just wasted a perfect chance to enjoy yourself, you know. The wolf raises an eyebrow and then rolls his eyes as if I was the one the wrong here. The audacity! Told you, I don't care. Roderick moves past me and decides to lean against one of the walls. So... Do you know a lot of people from the church? What makes you think I do? I mean, we're going there tomorrow. I'm just curious to know if you've got any connections there. Besides, you must have suggested it for a reason, right? It was the first thing that crossed my mind. Don't give it much thought. Hmm. 
You know, but wonder if that's actually the real reason. But knowing him, no matter how much I pry in the, I pry in the matter, he won't say a thing. Back to silence, the wolf doesn't show any sign of continuing the conversation. So I decided to respect his wishes and just lay in my bed. My back turned to, turned to him. Yeah. <laughs> a few minutes pass and the wolf just stands there without moving or saying a word. Ugh, it's so unbearable to think that he's just standing there. How does he manage to make all of our interactions uncomfortable as fuck? So annoying. I guess I should talk to him about something. So, how's Eddie? Why do you ask? Just humor me. He took a deep blow to his ego. The bastard was so angry that he refused to get his bruise checked. Heh, <laughs> good to know. I feel a certain sense of accomplishment as I hear Roderick say that. The bastard had it coming. You did well in that fight. You tried your best and it showed. Thanks, I had a good teacher. I turned back around to face him, catching a glimpse of his smile. Good teacher, I just had to hit you a few times until I got something useful out of you. Nothing to it. I chuckled at his response. Did Roderick just make a joke? The world must be upside down. Any skilled swordsman could have done it, really. Yeah, but you're a really good man. None of the knights, I, none of the knights I've seen have such a, have such a skill as yours. Have a skill such as yours. Thinking about that, Eddie mentioned that you were one of the best swordsmen in the entire kingdom. Was he exaggerating? People just like to run their mouths. <sighs> maybe, or maybe they say it for a reason. You must have done something to earn the title of the best swordsman. Don't you think? Not really a title. I'm just a good knight, that's all. No, not really a tittle. I've kept the people safe. I've bled on the battlefield like everyone else, and I've buried my loved ones like my, like any soldier. There's nothing special about me. Dang. This took a dark turn pretty quick. So he's lost someone on the field, huh? I wish I could ask him about it, but I know he would just evade my question or he wouldn't answer at all. The silence soon fills the room, but I don't want to give up on the conversation just yet. Oh. I feel like this is one of those rare moments in which Roderick is actually willing to talk with me. So not wanting to waste this chance, I'm ready myself for the next question, since I haven't been able to think of nothing else after what happened at the shop of Pat. So, um, there's something I've wanted to ask you. What does it feel like? Killing, I mean. The wolf remains silent, sadly I can't really read his expression. The first time is hard. You feel dizzy, your arms shake, and the nausea is unstoppable. I can only imagine how traumatic it must be to witness someone's life where someone's life wither away in front of you. And worst of all, by your own hand. If Roderick hadn't stopped me that time, I would be... Alright, one second, y'all. It is indeed water time. Mm. Last four minutes of the video. Let's make it count. Then it gets easier. When, then it gets easier. You begin to consider it less. They just become a count that you keep in your head until eventually there are too many to count. Have you killed a lot of people working as a royal knight? Not as a royal knight. I want to ask him more about this topic, but the wolf moves from, from his wall and turns off the candles. He then turns at me and says, Give me the blanket. I'll sleep on the floor. It takes me by surprise, as I was expecting him to take the other, other side of the bed. I mean, he's huge, and the bed is not that big. Hey, little girl. My, uh, my partner's uh, kitty. He brought his kitty. Or, um, he, they brought their kitty with them. Sweet little girl. She's an elderly lady. She's so sweet. She's so tiny. She is a tiny kitty. She's so wonderfully sweet. I mean, he's huge and the bed is not that big, but I'm sure we can fit in if... I'm sure we can fit in if we squeeze together. Although, personally, I'm not sure how he would take that idea. He doesn't like personal contact one bit, and as far as I know, he could hit me in my sleep if I'm not careful. Still, am I really going to let this man sleep on the floor for my sake? No, I should just invite him over. The floor is way too cold, even for him. Besides, he'll also get an awful backache. I would know. So sighing deeply, I move a little closer to the edge of the bed, hopefully giving the wolf enough space for him to lie down. Hop on. I say as I pat the empty spot beside me. The wolf decides to give me a confused look before grunting. We're not sleeping in the same bed, Runt. Ah. Uh, so, would you rather sleep on the cold floor and risk getting sick? Stop being so uptight and get over here. I promise I won't bite you or anything, so don't worry about that. We will need to find a we'll need to find a comfortable position for us both for us both, though. I mean, have you seen how big you are? Clearly we'll have to squeeze together so we fit. But just for the sake of sleeping comfortably, don't get any weird ideas. 
Hey, for all I care, you can just sleep on the floor and get back get back pains. It's not like it's my problem or anything. You're such a fucking sundere. Like I'm actually trying to take care of you, Baka. Wait, what did he say? What did he say? Yep. Okay. Will you shut the fuck up if I just say yes? Both interrupts me in the middle of my speech, making me blush as it made me notice how much I ran my mouth. Gosh, why am I getting nervous all of a sudden? It's not like I actually care if he sleeps on the floor or not. I'm just trying to be nice. Right? The wolf takes his pants off without a warning, and I can't help but blush. He's not using a robe like most people. He's wearing a very thick-looking thick undergarment that only covers his junk. Which is quite impressive, if I may say so. Makes me feel... a little tiny in comparison. Without a second thought, Roderick drops on the bed, making it creak with our combined weight. The wolf then lays with his back turned to me on his side of the bed. Which, let's be honest, it's at least 70% of the entirety of it. Following his example, I also lay completely bare on top of the bed. I feel like I'm going to fall off the bed, so I carefully try to move to try to move back. But to no one's surprise, the, wolf back, the wolf's back blocks my path to safety. I want to tell him to move, but I fear that he'll react badly to my complaint, so I remain quiet instead. Seems like it'll be a difficult night, so I try to get a head start and fall asleep. But as I close my eyes, I hear the wolf moving around. He tries to move back into the bed, but luckily for me, he notices that I'm here and he stops. Because if he had carried on with that, I would be kissing the floor right now. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye